There is no lack of weird and wonderful birds in this world. Most of that credit goes to the dinosaurs. The two-legged creatures that were once roaming the earth, gave rise to these beautiful species that we know today. Most birds now are much smaller, and frankly less terrifying than their ancestors. But their quirky plumage, bills, and markings, carry on the dinosaurs' affinity for the strange. Unfortunately, many of the birds on this list are endangered, due to high levels of poaching. Giving us all the more reason to appreciate their alluring patterns and charming behaviors. Today, we look at 18 of the most interesting birds that inhabit our planet. First up on our list we have the marabou stork. They can be found in Africa south of the Sahara, in both wet and arid habitats, often near human habitation, especially landfill sites. They are actually known for looking like the Grim Reaper. Not just because of their appearance, they also feed off of dead animals and human waste. The most peculiar feature of this species is the large air sac, a red pouch that hangs from its neck. Connected to the left nostril, the sac inflates and acts as a resonator of sorts to create a loud croaking noise. Males use it for courting purposes to woo a mate, just like peacocks spread their feathers trying to impress the females. He's not all bad though. The marabou stork plays a necessary role in the ecosystem by cleaning up waste, because he eats it. Next up we have the bird that looks like hell itself. This frightening villain-looking individual is native to central eastern Africa. The shoebill is a gargantuan creature, growing as tall as 55 inches with a wingspan of over 8 feet long. The shoebill stork has one of the most distinctive beaks in the bird kingdom. The jaw muscles and hardened bill help it to easily dismember captured prey. It feasts primarily on fish, with occasional amphibians, reptiles, and even smaller birds thrown in the mix. He has a mean-looking face, but he's also an endangered species, so let's go easy on him. If there's one bird on the list you don't want to encounter in the wild, it's the southern cassowary. They are native to Australia and Oceania and are part of a larger family, including giant birds like emus, ostriches, rheas and much smaller kiwis. They are extremely territorial, and when provoked can use their large claws to maim or even kill humans. Part of the fatal blow is attained through their speed, which tops out just a hair over 30 miles per hour. Combine that with a sharp talon and you have a recipe for destruction. Some experts believe the purpose of the bird's helmet is to protect its head as it runs through the tangled forest, while others say it is a reflection of dominance. Whatever its purpose, the cask is a stunning accessory. The Hornbills This bird spends his days roaming around the mountain rainforests and having a fake beak on top of its actual beak. It's not actually a second beak, it's a little red and orange colored horn, used to amplify its voice, so that everybody in the whole forest can hear it scream. They can be found in the Malay Peninsula, Sumatra, Borneo, Thailand, and Myanmar. The rhinoceros hornbill has a particularly rude mating habit, where the male essentially traps the female with mud in a tree trunk after she lays an egg, leaving only a tiny little hole in it so that he can feed her. Sadly, heavy hunting has pushed this species near extinction and their casks are highly sought after by poachers to create carved jewelry and ornaments. The Frogmouth it looks like an owl and it has a mouth that resembles that of a frog, thus the name. They are much weaker than an owl, so it's a good thing that their specialty is camouflage. They blend right into the trees, making them incredibly hard to spot in the wild. They're also known to keep their mouth open and let insects come to them, snapping the mouth shut when a tasty treat comes their way. Both sexes incubate and defend the nest from predators. The eggs are incubated for about 30 days. After hatching, both parents feed the hungry chicks until 30 days of age, when the hatchlings finally leave the nest. Next up we have the Andean cock of the rock. They are native to Andean cloud forests in South America and it is widely regarded as the national bird of Peru. The male has a large disc-like crest and scarlet or brilliant orange plumage, while the female is significantly darker and browner. Gatherings of males compete for breeding females with each male displaying its colorful plumage bobbing and hopping, and making a variety of calls. The worldwide population size and trends in population numbers have not been determined, but it is believed that the Andean cock of the rock is not threatened. Juveniles and adult members of this species have occasionally been used as pets. The greater prairie chicken, or the pinnated grouse, sometimes called a boomer, is a large bird in the grouse family. Adult males have orange comb-like feathers over their eyes, and dark elongated head feathers that can be raised or lain along the neck. They also possess a circular unfeathered neck patch which can be inflated while displaying. This, like their comb feathers, is also orange. They are territorial birds and often defend their booming grounds. 
These booming grounds are the area in which they perform their displays in hopes of attracting females. The displays consist of inflating air sacs located on the side of their neck and snapping their tails. This North American species was once abundant, but has become extremely rare and extirpated over much of its range due to habitat loss. Frigate birds are a family of seabirds called Fregatidae, which are found across all tropical and subtropical oceans. All have predominantly black plumage, long, deeply forked tails and long hooked bills. Able to soar for weeks on wind currents, frigate birds spend most of the day in flight hunting for food, and roost on trees or cliffs at night. They have the most elaborate mating displays of all seabirds. They display to females flying overhead by pointing their bills upwards, inflating their red throat pouches and vibrating their outstretched wings. They produce a drumming sound by vibrating their bills together and sometimes give a whistling call. As frigate birds nest in large dense colonies and small areas, they are vulnerable to local disasters that could wipe out their colonies. Next up we have the Watsin, also known as the reptile bird. The Watsin is a species of bird found in swamps, riparian forests, and mangroves of the Amazon in South America. It has an unfeathered blue face with maroon eyes, and its head is topped by a spiky, rufous crest. It has also been chosen by Guyana as their national bird. This is a noisy species, with a variety of hoarse calls, including groans, croaks, hisses and grunts. These calls are often associated with body movements, such as wing spreading. In Brazil, indigenous people sometimes collect the eggs for food, and the adults are occasionally hunted but in general this is rare, as Watsin meat is reputed to have a bad taste. Their existence is constantly threatened by the continuous deforestation of the Amazon rainforest, which significantly impacts the habitat of this species. The greater sage grouse, also known as the sage hen, is the largest grouse in North America. It resides in sagebrush country in the western United States and southern Alberta and Saskatchewan, Canada. Adult individuals have a long pointed tail, and legs with feathers to the toes. The adult male has a yellow patch over each eye, is grayish on top with a white breast, and has a dark brown throat and a black belly. Two yellowish sacs on the neck are inflated during courtship display. Greater sage grouse are notable for their elaborate courtship rituals. Each spring, males congregate and perform a strutting display. Groups of females observe these displays, and select the most attractive males with which to mate. The species is in decline across its range due to habitat loss, and has been recognized as threatened or near-threatened by several national and international organizations. Next on our list is the bee hummingbird. Also known as the Helena hummingbird, it's native to the island of Cuba in the Caribbean and is the smallest known bird. Females are 2.4 inches long. Slightly larger than males, which have an average length of 2.2 inches. Like all hummingbirds, the bee hummingbird is a swift, strong flyer. Females are bluish-green with a pale gray underside, and the tips of the tail feathers have white spots. During the mating season, males have a reddish to pink head, chin, and throat. The female lays only two eggs at a time, each about the size of a coffee bean. The bee hummingbird is also the smallest known dinosaur, as no smaller bird or non-avian dinosaur has been found in the fossil record. The California condor is the largest North American land bird. It became extinct in the wild in 1987, when all remaining wild individuals were captured, but has since been reintroduced to northern Arizona and southern Utah, including the Grand Canyon area. The plumage is black with patches of white on the underside of the wings, the head is largely bald, with skin color ranging from gray on young birds to yellow and bright orange on breeding adults. Its 9.8 feet wingspan is the widest of any North American bird, and its weight of up to 26 pounds, nearly equals that of the trumpeter swan, the heaviest among native North American bird species. Beginning in 1991, condors were reintroduced into the wild. Since then, their population has grown, but the California condor remains one of the world's rarest bird species. In December 2020 there were 504 California condors living wild or in captivity. The condor is a significant bird to many California Native American groups and plays an important role in several of their traditional myths. Also known as the Chinese pheasant, or rainbow pheasant, the golden pheasant stems its name from the ancient Greek word krusolophos, meaning with golden crest. It is native to forests in mountainous areas of western China, but feral populations have been established all over the world, from Bolivia to the United Kingdom. Males have a golden yellow crest with a hint of red at the tip. Their face, throat, chin, and the sides of the neck are rusty tan. The wattles and orbital skin are both yellow in color, with a light orange cape. 
While they can fly clumsily in short bursts, they prefer to run and spend most of their time on the ground. If startled, they can suddenly burst upwards at great speed and with a distinctive wing sound. The spectacled eider gets its name from the markings around its eyes, that make it look like it's wearing glasses. This arctic seabird is built to handle cold temperatures and thrives in the tundra, as well as western Alaska, where its main breeding ground lies. The spectacled eider's diet consists mostly of mollusks, but when summer rolls around, these birds have been known to munch on grass and berries. As winter approaches, spectacled eiders tend to put on weight. The covered area above the nostrils, called the sear, swells and is a good indicator of the bird's condition. The spectacled eider duck lays 5 to 9 eggs in a cup nest. The incubation process takes around 25 days and the female rarely leaves the nest. The young grow very quickly and can fledge within two months. The great bustard is a bird in the bustard family and the only member of its genus. It predominantly lives in Portugal and Spain, though there are other populations in Europe and moderately successful reintroduction efforts in the United Kingdom. The males can weigh up to 40 pounds, making them the heaviest flying animal in the world. All birds heavier than that are flightless. Females of the species weigh around half of that, giving the bird some pretty severe sexual dimorphism. In this species, the male has a flamboyant display, beginning with the strutting male puffing up his throat to the size of a football. He then tilts forward and pulls his head in, so that the long whiskery chin feathers point upwards, and the head is no longer visible. The IEV, or Scarlet Honeycreeper is a species of Hawaiian honeycreeper. They are a highly recognizable symbol of Hawaii, and the third most common native land birds in the Hawaiian Islands. They are mostly scarlet, with black wings and tail and a long, curved, salmon-colored bill used primarily for drinking nectar. The contrast of the red and black plumage with surrounding green foliage makes this bird one of Hawaii's most easily seen native birds. They sing a peculiar song that consists of a couple of whistles, the sound of balls dropping in water, the rubbing of balloons together, and the squeaking of a rusty hinge. The kagu, or kagu, is a crested, long-legged, and bluish-gray bird endemic to the dense mountain forests of New Caledonia. Its nasal corns are a unique feature not shared with any other bird. Almost flightless, it spends its time on or near the ground, where it hunts its invertebrate prey, and builds a nest of sticks on the forest floor. Strangely, the kagu has large wings for its body, considering it's only about the size of a common chicken. Despite the fact that it is a flightless bird, its wings do serve an important function. The parents flap their wings on the ground, looking injured, to distract incoming predators from attacking the chicks. Today, the kagu is considered very important in New Caledonia, it is a high-profile endemic emblem for the territory. Its distinctive song used to be played to the nation every night, as the island's TV station signed off the air. Its survival is considered important for the territory's economy and image. Last but not least we have the umbrella bird. They can be found in the rainforests of Central and South America. They are generally solitary, but known to co-inhabit areas with other birds including other umbrella birds, and similar species such as woodpeckers. The umbrella bird is almost entirely black, and has a conspicuous crest on the top of its head, vaguely resembling an umbrella, hence its common name. All have an inflatable waddle on the neck, which serves to amplify their loud, booming calls. Unfortunately, populations are decreasing, in large part from human encroachment on their native lowland forests, generally for agriculture. I hope you found this video interesting. If you have, take a look at this next video on 27 different types of wolves. Have a great day and stay tuned for more videos on wildlife.